Hey everyone, welcome to my Oculus Quest uh, template setup. In this video, I'm going to be going through uh, kind of all the setup steps needed to get a Unity project ready to deploy to an Oculus Quest. And I'm doing this so that I can have a template to copy every time I want to build a new project for the Oculus Quest. Um, I'll be doing, I'm planning on doing quite a bit of development for the Quest in the coming months. And this will save me a lot of time just with the setup process, um, so I don't have to do the same thing every time. We're starting with just a, a sample scene, and I have kind of a checklist here that I'll be going through. I'll also include that checklist in the description down below um, and try to keep it updated as, as best I can. The first step for any, uh, any Oculus project is going to be to import the Oculus integration. This is a free set of scripts and prefabs created by the Oculus development team. Uh, and it makes working with the Oculus Quest much, much easier. Uh, or the Rift, if you're building for the Rift. So I'm going to go ahead and import these assets into my scene here. And it is going to ask you if you want to update a couple of, of uh, additional plugins. Just go ahead and click Upgrade in these prompts, and then it'll ask you to restart Unity. Uh, and go ahead and do that too. And so the first thing that we're going to do when we get, um, after we get everything imported here, we're going to replace the main camera that comes with the sample scene with the OVR player controller, which contains the camera inside it. Um, so it's under Oculus, Assets, Oculus, VR, Prefabs, and then you're going to find that OVR player controller prefab asset. So. I'm deleting the main camera, I'm tossing in the OVR player controller, um, and the OVR player controller has a lot uh, going on in it, so I would recommend checking that out in the Oculus documentation, but again it does have a camera in there. So next up what I want to do is add a floor. Uh, some people use like a plane or a cube. I'm going to use a terrain because I feel like that gives me a little bit more space to build on. Um, and when I when I import the terrain, I don't want it to be massive. Uh, so I'm going to set it from 1,000 by 1,000 to just 100 by 100. So we're going to go to terrain, click on the gear for settings, and then scroll down to uh, terrain width and terrain length. And I'm just bumping that down to 100 by 100. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is just change the X and Z positioning of the terrain to negative 50 and negative 50. And this sort of centers it on my OVR player controller if that player controller is set at 0, 0, 0. So you can kind of get a, a glimpse here of about how big it is and what it looks like. Um, the OVR player controller isn't showing up because I don't have gizmos turned on. Uh, you can see me trying to fiddle around with that and I'll turn those on later on so you can actually see where it is. But if you're having that problem of the, the player controller not showing up, just make sure you have gizmos turned on. Um, next up, what we're going to do is I'm going to import the local avatar. And the local avatar is what allows your hands to show up. It's sort of a, another prefab asset from Oculus. It allows you to see your hands in the scene, um, or not in the scene, but when you when you build or when you deploy to your application, you can actually see your hands, um, which is you know something that you want to have. Saves you from having to build like little cubes for hands or something like that. Um, you'll notice I can't find it under the prefabs here, so I'm just going to search for avatar, and that should allow me to grab that local avatar prefab asset. Uh, there are a couple different versions. You can see local avatar with grab listed there. Um, that will include a pair of grabber hands, but I'm just going to use local avatar for this build. And you want to go uh, and put it under the tracking space. So it's going to go under OVR player controller, OVR camera rig, tracking space, and that's where you want the local avatar to go. Uh, putting it other places just gets buggy in my experience, so it seems to be the best way to do it. Next up, I'm going to import a couple of additional packages for Unity that I like to use. Uh, I want to use, so I'm going to go to Assets, sorry, Edit, and 
You can see I'm having some trouble remembering where this is at. Yeah, there we go. It's Windows Package Manager. Um, and so I want to install, I'm going to switch to all packages. And then I want to install Pro Builder and Pro Grids. Uh, Pro Grids is actually a preview package, which means it's not going to show up immediately when you open this package manager window. So you have to go to the advanced tag and then select show preview packages, which I'll do here in just a second. So you can see I'm looking for Pro Grids. I can't find it. Um, I go to advanced and then it says show preview packages. I'm going to click on that. Uh, click yes, I want to see preview packages. And then it'll refresh the list and I'll be able to see all these additional packages that show preview flag next to them. So ProGrids is one. I'm going to install that. Uh, it'll take a little while to import. And then ProBuilder is the other one that I want and I'm going to install that too. Again, these aren't specific to Oculus, so you don't need these. These are just my own personal preference for what I want to have at the start of my project. Okay. So we've got those installed. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up some of the player settings um, so that when we build our application and deploy it to the Oculus Quest, uh, everything will build appropriately. And so that just means basically giving the SDK a bunch of information to work with. Um, if you're wondering what I'm doing now, I'm trying to turn on the ProGrids window. It's under Tools, ProGrids. There we go. And you get that extra set of tools in the the editor window there okay so um, let's go ahead and let's go to it's gonna be edit yep so we need to switch um, the platform so that it's building for Android instead of PC and then we need to give um, the SDK some information that it's gonna be a virtual reality situation so we're going to edit preferences or sorry edit project settings down at the bottom project settings and then um, under player on the left we do want to make sure our company name is set to something other than default company, so I'm just going to type in Halstead Industries, make sure the product name and version numbers are correct, and then we have two sets of settings here. Under this um, bundle identifier, you want to make sure that that is uh, named appropriately. That's what it will appear as when you're uh, finding the app in the Quest library. Under uh, Android settings and graphics APIs, we want to remove Vulkan or it will not compile correctly. And then under minimum API level, we want to set that to 19, API level 19. Then we go down to here to XR settings and we want to make sure that virtual reality supported is checked. And then we also want to add Oculus to the list of virtual reality SDKs. So the list will be empty by default usually. And you want to go ahead and click that plus button and then import the Oculus option. And you can leave kind of all those checkboxes as defaults. Uh, going back to PC settings, just double check that, again, under XR settings, virtual reality is supported, um, and the Oculus reality SDK is, is added there. Okay. So next, what we want to do, we got the company name. Uh, item number seven there on my list, uh, that actually is no longer necessary. So you used to have to go into the OVR player controller and change the camera type or the, the camera rig and change the camera type. Uh, they updated that, so you don't have to do that anymore. So I'm going to save the scene. And after the scene is saved, we're going to go into our build settings and basically convert um, all of these assets to build or compile for Android. So build settings, file build settings, and then on the left under platform, we're going to choose Android. Texture compression is going to be ASTC, and then we click switch platform. Switching platform will take some time.
So just be patient on that. And then you're pretty much ready. If you wanted to go ahead and deploy it, you could click add open scenes and then click build and run. Actually, I take that back. I am getting a little bit ahead of myself. So I should specify there's two ways that you can test your scene out on the Oculus Quest. You can actually build and run the scene. And what that's going to do is compile it to an SDK and then push that to your Oculus Quest. Uh, the other way you can do that is using the Oculus Link, which I do have set up now. Um, you can just preview the scene sort of in the headset by pressing play in the Unity Editor. And so that's what I'm going to get set up next is I'm going to basically um, set everything up so that when I press the play button in the Unity Editor, I can just put my headset on and test it out right there in the scene. Um, to do that, I'm going to need to, of course, set up the... Um, I'm going to need to have the Oculus desktop app installed on my computer, which I already do have, so I'm not going to be going through that. You can see it uh, in my toolbar down below. Um, and then we also need to take a few extra steps to set up um, the app integration. So here's the Oculus app. You need to go to Devices and just make sure... I'm just making sure that my Quest is connected and, and active. Um, and then go to Settings, and under General Settings, you want to make sure that Unknown Sources is allowed. So here, um, I already had it turned on, but this is what it would look like to allow that. So yeah, just click allow. Um, that's going to make sure that you're, uh, when you press play, it actually allows you to run the scene on the quest itself. The next thing that we need to do, um, oh, so I'm just going to add a, a cube into the scene here, just to make sure that I've got something to look at, aside from an endless sort of void. Uh, so I'm, I'm getting my cube positioned here, and that'll just make sure I've got something to sort of walk around and check out when I'm in the scene. Looks great. So next up, uh, we're going to go and generate an, uh, like a developer ID, basically. That um, And without this, so it's Oculus and Avatars and Oculus and Platform. Um, and without this, your your local avatar is not going to display properly. Uh, the hands won't show up and you do kind of want the hands just while you're developing because it's a lot easier. So you click on that developer link here. It's uh, dashboard.oculus.com and then I'm just creating a new application. Um, I'm choosing Oculus Rift. You can choose either one and then under that app ID just copy that set of numbers. Go to Oculus Avatars and Unity. Click Edit Settings and paste that under both the Rift app ID and the Quest app ID. And then do the same thing for Oculus. Uh, that's the one we just did. So Oculus Platform, Edit Settings. And then, yeah, under the same thing there. So you see here, you've got, that's the link to take you to the dashboard where you can generate this ID. Um, and then you wanna make sure it's pasted in to both of those fields. So now I'm going to press play, put on my headset, and you can see actually in the Unity window there that I've got the headset on my head. I'm kind of looking around and then it doesn't display very well, but you can see that the hands are showing up. So if you didn't paste that ID number into those fields, uh, the hands would not be showing in your sort of test of the scene here. Um, but I can walk around, I can look at my cube, I can I can test out the whole scene here. Um, so this is pretty much it. Everything is ready to go now. And if you wanted to go to File, uh, Build Settings, and then Build and Run, that would compile everything and deploy it to your, your actual quest so you could play it without being tethered. Uh, thanks for watching. Please leave a comment below if you have any questions or if I skipped anything. I'll be happy to sort of help troubleshoot. And uh, yeah, cheers.